In Nalolo district, the vehicles transporting the poles and staff had a double breakdown. Um, the first set of vehicles broke down and um, they, the retrieval vehicle also got stuck because of the terrain. And we're, we were about to engage staff to lift the post staff when we got word at around uh, 14 hours that um, they had managed to deliver the last of the staff. So as I speak now, the latest update that we have is uh, that the latest polling station opened at 16.05 hours. So it means that they have to compensate for the, the lost time and ensure that voting is done for the 12 hours as stipulated by law. We have made arrangements with staff that all the post staff in these areas be retrieved by ZAF after the close of poll and the counting has been done, which obviously will be tomorrow, the early hours of tomorrow, when we will finish. The affected wards, as a reminder, as Luana Ward, um, that is where the last, um, that's about five polling stations were um, delayed. Then we also have uh, the polling stations in the Andamu Ward and Ngume Ward in Sioma District. Now, I need to clarify the issue of the official maps. Again, in social media, what I said in the morning has been misinterpreted. And the, the word going around is that the faint official mark is as a result of the ballot paper which was printed in the time. This is entirely incorrect. I wish I had an opportunity to bring a sample of what the official mark looks like, and I will do so in 21 hours. Uh, because I found this report when I, I got back from the field. The official mark is actually a self-inking stamp which is used to mark the ballot paper behind. I'm sure you're all aware that each ballot paper must be marked with our official mark <coughs> behind the ballot paper and we use a self-inking stamp. Now, as I had explained in the morning, this self-inking stamp, the ink has been very faint, especially after marking a certain number of ballot papers. And I explained the remedial measures that the Commission had undertaken. One of them was to advise the field officers to use ink pads. Those polling stations that did not have ink pads, ink pads were hurriedly procured for them. The other option, especially for the distant polling stations that would not be able to procure ink pads, was for the polling assistant with the knowledge of the polling agents and monitors, write the word official behind the ballot paper in a bid to ensure that ballot papers are not inadvertently rejected because of the problem with this self-inking stamp, which is our official mark. So this problem of the official mark, which is a self-inking stamp, has got nothing to do with the ballot paper, with the printing of the ballot paper, or the quality of the ballot paper. And I did not say that I was taking up this issue with the printer. Those of you who were here this morning, I'm sure you heard me correctly. I did not say that I was following up this issue with the printer. The printer has done their work, and the issue that we will be taking up is with the supplier of this self-inking stamp, with one of which I will come with at 21 hours so that you know what it looks like. I can safely come with it because I will not be able to be accused that I'm going around stamping uh, ballot papers and so on. 
So that is the issue of um, the faint official mark. Then uh, in the morning we were asked about the arrest of Mr. one of the candidates, Mr. Philip Osamu. We have since been informed by the police that yes, there was an incident. Um, after he had cast his vote, he remained within the prince. Apparently, he remained within the precincts of the polling station and was seen talking to some people in the queue, which caused some concern. And um, he was reported to the police, and the matter is in the hands of the police. Then there was also the issue of missing voters on the register that has come up during the course of the day. And we received um, reports of some voters who were in possession of their voters' cards that were missing on the register. And most of the voters called through on our toll free line and uh, we were able to redirect them to their right voting streams. But however, regrettably, there were some voters who were placed in wrong polling stations during the voter registration exercise on account of similarities in the polling station names. For example, we had a case of voters who, are, who applied to register at St. Mary's uh, School in Osaka in Woodlands, but were registered under St. Mary's um, in Nakonde. And uh, unfortunately, the affected voters did not verify their details during our inspection period. Otherwise, we would have been able to check and correct their, their details. So this is unfortunate. And I've already asked that the officers who were stationed at this uh, station uh, be identified so that um, the commission can uh, take action. Um, other than that, in terms of um, the environment, I'm sure we will agree that uh, the, we've had a very peaceful environment. And um, the Commission wishes to encourage all Zambians to remain calm throughout the remaining uh, voting period and also as we transition into the counting of votes after the closure of the polls, we are urging you to remain peaceful until the results, final results are announced and, and, and declared. However, uh, sadly, just before I came in, and that's also what caused a bit of delay, we have received um, a report from the police that there has been some violence in Tejiteji, uh, where some people have been injured, and we are still waiting to, to get um, further, further details. So, um, on that note, this brings me to the end of our brief, but uh, Mr. Okuno, you said there was something to do with an aircraft. Yes, the storytelling still hasn't ended. Um, I was being briefed by Mr. Okuno that there were reports that um, we had I don't know if they apparently pre-marked ballot papers on an Ethiopian airline aircraft that landed at 02 this, this morning. But it has since been established that it had a cargo of medicine. So, <laughs> <laughs> my fellow countrymen and women, please, this uh, new phenomenon of human movement that we have entered into is not new. Let us be truthful. We are here as a commission to clarify. And really, it, it, it boggles my mind that in this day and age, we are still able to come up with, you know, wild claims. But I suppose some of us have vivid imaginations. But you know, elections are sensitive. So let's be mindful of the information that we send out, especially social media. The Commission really gets concerned about some of the reports that are circulated on social media. But uh, that's not to say that we appreciate the media that are responsible in their reporting and please continue to support us 
as you do your reporting. We also appreciate being informed of any issues of concern on the ground because it helps us to deal with situations and rectify any areas um, of concerns and to put things right. Thank you very much for your attention. Simon. I am the Saga DC Secretary, Budget Front. My concern is on Chinika Secondary School, which is in Kanyama constituency. Uh, I have observed that they were no, the uh, voting booth were not adequate. The stream they were about to, and most of the voters were inconvenienced. They had to wait uh, for a longer period. There were actually two queues outside and inside for those who were, who were already uh, marked on the ballot boxes. My other question is on the people who have got challenges, uh, people who are pregnant, uh, the aged, they were not given a priority in most streams. Thank you very much. that uh, the staff were inadequate, but 
that the number of staff we employ is determined by the number of streams. And for this election, the maximum number of voters in a stream was 950. And so that translated to us having 10,810 or 18 streams countrywide. Now, the challenge that we have faced today, because we would have had the same number of um, uh, voters per stream, like for instance in last year's election we had about 850 per stream, but if you compare the turnout of last year to this year, you will agree it is a big difference. We had an overwhelming turnout, and hats off to the people of Zambia for taking this election seriously and turning up to, to vote. So it is something that we have noted for the future, so that we may need to review um, the maximum number of voters per stream, because if we reduce the number of voters per stream, it means the number of streams is increased. And that will translate to an increase in four staff. So for Lusaka, I was in close contact with the, the town clerk as we were getting reports of the long queues, and his office did make an effort to deploy contingency staff to the congested polling stations. The issue of uh, mobile toilets is noted, and it is uh, disappointing that some polling stations had their toilets locked because the owners of the premises do know that it is required that that facility be availed for, to the public, at least for this one day. Then in terms of uh, the issue of the faint stand, yes, it was of major concern to us. And I believe that this is why we have polling agents and monitors on the ground. It can be agreed in instances where the, the ballots were cast before this remedial measure was taken to take those ballot papers as valid because it is an exceptional uh, circumstance. And um, the Commission had already taken this into consideration and since it is coming from a stakeholder, I'm sure the other stakeholders will be in agreement, I will take this back to the Commission so that the decision can be made and our officers informed. But both you and I know that there will be times in a polling station, even without us knowing, polling agents and monitors, especially the polling agents, will come to a consensus on the way forward, just like there will be a consensus as to whether a ballot paper is rejected or not, even though the decision of um, the presiding officer will be the, the, the final one depending on the particular situation. Then in terms of uh, Chinika Secondary School, it is, it is disappointing to note that there were inadequate voting booths. It's within Lusaka. The commission could quickly have been informed that more voting booths were needed to speed up the, the process, but that is noted. I'm also disappointed to hear that uh, pregnant uh, women, the elderly, and uh, the aged, and uh, those with physical challenges were not given priority, that they were not fast track, because this is one point that we emphasize during our training, that this category of persons must be given priority um, at polling stations. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. Um, did I see a hand there? At the back, yes. Uh, Richard, I will take another hand at the back. And um, um, can I give you uh, this uh, side a chance? So please. 
Sorry. Stuck with the gentleman in the right place. Good evening, I'm Augustine Mwawa from Koloka News. I would like to have the director to uh, shed more light on a news item that was made on Radio Phoenix at 13 hours that there were 2,500 ballot papers that were confiscated in Chenege for students from a non who were at the Ministry of Education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Yes, it's for the Commission to determine what form the official mark on the ballot paper will take. In this case, the tradition has been to use a physical mark. If you remember, previously it was a wooden block which you would um, press on the ink pad and then mark behind the ballot paper. And then we progressed to the self-inking stamp. Now, in the administration of an election, the commission is mandated to deal with situations such as this. And since it's within the mandate of the commission to determine what form of the, the, the mark would take, yes, it is within our mandate to direct that in the absence of a reliable official mark, an officer, the, the polling assistant designate, designated to mark the ballot paper, would write official behind the ballot paper. And what we directed was that this should be explained to the polling agents and the monitors so that that act is not misunderstood. In terms of uh, Chipangali, where the polling agents, uh, uh, sorry, the, the polling staff ordered the polling agents to, to leave the polling station at lunchtime, that was not in order because in terms of election, the lunch break is within the polling station, even if it is a quiet period. All those that are entitled to be in the polling station should be within the polling station. And we'll be happy if you give us details of this particular polling station and uh, the name of the officer so that we can follow it up. And normally, once somebody falls, that is the end. We don't want to see them as part of our election staff anymore, we blacklist. And it is also at this juncture that I would like to urge all political parties, please accommodate each other after the close of four. We've already received reports that amongst yourselves, some of you have taken it upon yourselves to start chasing your colleagues and saying that you have no place in the polling station. Each and every candidate, political party participating in this election is entitled to have their polling agents to witness the poll from start to finish. So please, can we desist from intimidating our colleagues, your, from intimidating your, your, your colleagues and chasing them from polling stations? I want to mention who because it's not just one political party. So please, it is an earnest appeal. Let's finish this process as one. Let none of us be disadvantaged. Then um, I was not, the commission is not aware that um, some wards in Katongola only started at 15 hours and some at 17 hours. And like I said, for those um, that started late in, in Western province and Northwestern, Zambezi in particular, they have to compensate for the lost hours and be open for the full 12 hours as all the other polling stations work from 6 to, to 18 hours. So if you calculate 12 hours from 15 hours and 17 hours, that will give you the estimated closing closing time for those for the affected polling stations. But from here we'll make a follow-up with the district director officer on what happened and why we were not informed. Streams. You have said that we have more streams. Now if we go the route of reducing the number of voters in a stream so that we can deploy more staff and quicken the vote, further quicken the voting process, it means that US political parties will require more agents. Because if we reduce the number of streams, say from 850 to 7, uh, the number of voters in a stream from 850 or to 750, automatically it will increase the number of streams they will go up. So we can't run away from the fact that you would need to increase your, your polling agents because it is your right to have 
the agents uh, present at each stream to 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 observe um, uh, to observe the process. And then um, I don't know which uh, candidate was being escorted, but if it was the Republican president, he's still Republican president and still entitled to his security escort wherever he goes. And that applies uh, to the vice president. And then uh, the news item about 2,500 uh, pre-printed, uh, pre-marked ballot papers being confiscated from an office orderly in Chalende. Yes, we have received um, that report and the gentleman is in the custody of the police. We're waiting for more details, but in terms of what we had been briefed on earlier on, the chap has no ballot papers at all. He was just being mischievous. And uh, he was squeezed, and he, con he couldn't produce what he said he had. And apparently, he started apologizing that, no, I just want you to see what people do. <laughs> So you see, this is the type of um, irresponsibility that, you know, it worries us. I personally get very worried because in the end, it is the director of elections who is responsible for ballot paper. And I mean, like I said, it just boggles my mind. But anyway, he's in the cooler and he may stay there until he's taken to, to court preventing from further mischief and I hope it serves as a warning.